The following teaching is possible thanks to the friends and partners of Spirit and Truth Fellowship International. What does the Bible say about suffering? Well, straight up, what it says is we're going to suffer. That's as simple as it is. The Bible says that people are going to suffer. I mean, if we think about it, between the devil, the demons, and evil people, the fallen nature of the world, and of, of course, our own sin and our own mistakes, yes, the Bible says we're all going to suffer. In fact, Let's read out of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, reading out of the ESV, the English Standard Version. Here's God's word. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. <laughs> I mean, that's as simple and as straight up as it can be. Don't be surprised at the fiery trials we go through, as if there was something strange. Yet it's amazing how many people, and, and I was once one of them, who believe that, well, but if we have faith, God will protect us from suffering. Or uh, if we just do what's right, uh, God will, will somehow love us more and move the world around so that we're protected from suffering. And that just really isn't true. It's not that faith doesn't help. It does help in certain situations. And it's not that being good and righteous and obedience, obedient doesn't help, because that does too in certain situations. But if you're just as obedient as you can possibly be and, and have great faith like the prophets, like Jesus Christ, does that mean you won't suffer? No, not at all. Listen again to the Word of God. Do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you. Now, I've thought about three very serious consequences to believing that if you have faith or if you're good, you won't suffer. One is you're misreading hundreds of Bible verses. I mean, what do you do with verses like 1 Peter 4.12 that say we're going to suffer if you believe that? You, you have to say, well, we are going to suffer unless we have faith or something like that. So one consequence of believing if you have faith or if you're good, you won't suffer is that you end up misreading and misunderstanding lots of verses. Another is that you will get what the Bible says you will get at some point in your life over something. You and I will suffer. And if, if you believe that God would protect you from suffering if you had faith or if you were a good person, then you're, you're going to be confused. You're going to be troubled. You're going to be self-condemned even. And, and I've seen this with hundreds of people with whom I've ministered. And another thing is that believing if you have faith or if you're good that you're not going to suffer, it, it predisposes you to judge someone else who's in trouble or suffering. Uh, we become like Job's miserable comforters where Job hadn't done anything wrong and yet he was suffering and his miserable comforters showed up and it, it just that just didn't fit their theology so that they accused Job of doing horrible things that, that he hadn't done. What now, how does the Bible teach us about suffering? Well, how does the Bible teach us about anything? It's going to be through two particularly different ways. One is direct statements, like the one we just read in Peter, that we're going to suffer. And another is by the example of men and women in the Bible. And, you know, when it comes to examples of men and women in the Bible, human suffering started after the fall. But let's look at some of the direct statements. First of all, what about the everlasting future? I, I trust you want to be saved or have thought about being saved. You want to live forever. And God is going to be in control of the next life. And what does the Bible say in Revelation 21.4? It says, God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death shall be no more. Neither shall be, there be mourning or crying or pain anymore. And that's in the everlasting kingdom. These things won't exist. And then it says, for the former things have passed away. What former things? Well, the former things like the existence of the devil and demons and evil people and, and that type of thing. So in the next life, there won't be suffering because the, but the former things have passed away. In this life, there is suffering. What did Jesus say? Well, in, at, at the Last Supper, I mean, here's Jesus' last address in, in his life on earth to his disciples. 
you know, before he was arrested and then crucified, his last speech to them at the Last Supper, he said in John 6, 33, in this world you will have tribulation. And we're not going to beat that. That's the word of God. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. That was his advice to his followers so that when they had tribulation, they weren't caught off guard. What did Paul say? Acts chapter 14, verse 22. It says he encouraged his disciples to continue in the faith, saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. So Jesus and Paul said exactly the same thing. We're going to have trouble. We're going to have tribulations in this life. Romans goes so far as to say the whole creation suffering. It says, for we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. That's Romans 8, chapter 22. And of course, Christians suffer extra because we get persecution in 2 Timothy 3.12. The Bible says, indeed, all those who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Why is that? Because the devil and his demons come against uh, godliness and so do ungodly people. So we know what the Bible says about suffering. It says we're going to suffer. Is that borne out when we study the lives of the great men and women of the scripture? And certainly it is. In fact, um, if I were going to learn about faith and its role in life and in suffering, I would go to Hebrews chapter 11 where the scripture talks about the great men and women of faith. And, you know, when we look at, at those great men and women, if having great faith kept us from suffering, then the Bible, that would be the place to showcase it. Because Hebrews 11 is a whole list of who the peop, what the Bible, you know, and many people call rightly so, the heroes of faith. And yet we run down the list of the heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And, and what do we find? Do we find that their faith prevented them from suffering? No, we had Abel was listed. Abel was murdered. The Noah's listed. Noah witnessed the death of all human and animal life. Yeah, tough. Sarah was, was barren. Isaac had his son Jacob lie to him, and then Jacob had to leave the country to save his life. Never saw his father again. His father died without ever seeing his son again. Jacob himself had 10 of his 12 sons sell his beloved son Joseph into slavery and then lie to his face about it. And, and Jacob thought Joseph was dead for something like 23 years. He didn't get to see his son, and his brothers maintained that his sons maintained that lie. Joseph himself unjustly sold into slavery. He was a slave and a prisoner for more than 14 years. Moses was so burdened by the, the Israelites and their murmuring and their sin that in Numbers chapter 11, verse 15, he asked God to kill him, to take his life. I mean, these are the heroes of faith. If, if faith is supposed to keep us from suffering, <laughs> And the heroes of faith, it doesn't do it. What, then, then we have to ask ourselves, like, well, what, what's Hebrews 11 about? What did, the, what did those people do? They suffered well. They, they, they suffered in great faith. They maintained their faith in God and knew their suffering wasn't from God. Amen. And that's the great example of Hebrews chapter 11, that we're supposed to know that what we're suffering is not from God. And even, you know, when we think about the great miracles of the Bible, the great miracles of the Bible are in the, in the backdrop of suffering. I mean, take the Exodus, for example. The Exodus was one of the amazing miracles of the Bible. And yet it's in the backdrop of generations of, of people enslaved. You know, Elijah, Elijah multiplied the oil of an Israelite woman so she could pay her debts. <laughs> Why did she need the help? Well, her husband had died. I'm, I'm sure she would have rather had her husband around than a miracle with oil. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Fantastic miracle. But what's the backdrop? You know, him being sick, him suffering, him dying, his, his family so tormented by his death that even Jesus, it, that's the context in which it says Jesus wept. He was so troubled by what was going on with the family. And what's Hebrews 11 say? That talking about the heroes of faith. Others suffered mocking and flogging and chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in half. They were killed with the sword. Uh, they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated. And, and all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. So this is the great heroes of faith. But they had faith to persevere. 
What does James say? James chapter 5, verse 10 says, As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Well, the prophets were the one who, who had great faith and had the gift of Holy Spirit. But as an example of suffering, we're supposed to study their lives. Why? Because their suffering is a part of life and they maintained their faith and their godliness in the face of suffering. Well, we've done some Old Testament examples. What about New Testament examples? Stephen was a man full of faith, yet he was the first martyr of the church. Paul was a man of great faith and dedication and love for God, and yet he suffered horribly. You know, the apostle James was imprisoned and then killed because of his Christian faith. Paul's fellow worker Trophimus almost died from a sickness, according to Philippians 2.27. Um, that, I'm sorry, that was Epaphroditus. And Paul's fellow worker Trophimus became so sick in Miletus, Paul had to leave him behind. These are our New Testament examples of people who suffered. So what we see is that the suffering, the, the message about suffering is consistent through the whole Bible. Does the Bible say we're going to suffer? Yes, it does. Does the Bible say that our faith or our good works or our godliness will keep us from suffering? No, it doesn't. But what our faith does is it allows us to maintain our godliness and maintain our love for God and maintain our, our conviction in spite of suffering. So we shouldn't be discouraged about our suffering as if something was strange, you know, was happening to us or as if we didn't have faith or as if we weren't somehow good enough. Let's endure for God. Let's maintain our faith and stay faithful in the midst of suffering. God bless you.